Now there's nothing wrong with the EGR system on this car, so I'm not op going to open anything up, but from what I can tell, it looks like the passageway that's between your uh, EGR valve and the throttle body, or your intake, on this car is the... It's very short, and it's just, in fact, just right here. Just the, the exhaust gas that gets recirculated and goes through here is probably just goes through the throttle body, and as you the throttle plate opens, it just gets the fresh air, combines that with the exhaust gas, and just sends it to your intake manifold, and from there it goes to your uh, to a different uh, uh, combustion chambers. And if you look at the back of the EGR valve, here's the, the tube that comes from your uh, exhaust pipes. Uh, now it's going to be really hard to show you how it meets up with them, but basically just wraps around in the back and goes down there and meets up with one of your exhaust pipes. Okay, and as we talked about, this Ford does have an EGR pressure sensor or a DPFE, which is this guy right here. Uh, it's in a really tough spot to show you guys, but this is an electrical connector for it that goes to your uh, ECU and it has, if you just reach for it down there, it has these two vacuum hoses that go to the exhaust pipe that goes to your EGR valve itself. Okay, now let's assume we have a check engine light and the code is PO401, which is uh, an EGR insufficient flow. Now let's just go through some of the tests you can do to see if you can figure out where the problem is in the AGR system. The first thing we're going to do is to check the condition of the valve, whether it's working or not. And in order to do that, we're going to need a vacuum pump. And what we'll need to do is remove this vacuum hose that goes to the EGR valve. And then attach our vacuum pump to it. And next we'll apply a vacuum. And as you can see, it can hold vacuum but just to be on the safe side, we're going to wait about, let's say, 20 seconds and make sure it can hold vacuum for that long. Okay, so it's been about 20, 30 seconds and we have verified that the diaphragm in there can hold vacuum and it's not leaking. But in order to make sure that the diaphragm is actually, or the valve, it's uh, completely open when we apply vacuum and it's just not open halfway or something, we're going to have to turn on the car and then do this again. We're going to apply vacuum and then we are looking for the car to turn to for the engine to shut off. That happens because at idle your uh, air fuel mixture is pretty low and when you open the valve fully you're reintroducing uh, already burnt, burnt uh, gases, exhaust gases back into the engine and that throws the whole ratio way off and your car shuts off. Now with the engine idling we're gonna apply vacuum and your engine should turn off or at the very least start running quite differently or very rough. There we go. Let's release some vacuum. And it's back to normal. Alright, well as you saw the engine, we couldn't get it to shut off but as you saw it was running very rough, it was very close to turning off. So basically that means that the valve inside your EGR valve, the diaphragm, is working properly. But not only that, it also means that this passageway is clear between your EGR valve and your uh, throttle body or your intake. Because if it wasn't, you know, exhaust fumes wouldn't be able to pass through and then cause your engine to stall or run rough. Okay, now if you do this test and there's no different, you know, your engine doesn't turn off, there's uh, no rough idle, there's nothing changes really, or there's very, very little change. Well, basically that could mean a couple of things. It means that your uh, EGR valve is bad. It could mean that this passageway is blocked or this tube is blocked somewhere. Car there's carbon buildup and it's blocked. Or a combination or all of the above. <laughs> and in that case, what you'll have to do is basically open up this EGR valve. Then you would apply vacuum and visually inspect the the, the valve inside the EGR, make sure if it moves, then it's the valve itself is fine and there's a blockage somewhere here or in the tube. If it, the valve doesn't move, when you apply vacuum to it, when you pull it out and looking at it and you're applying vacuum and the, the valve inside it doesn't move, then it's the valve itself and you need to replace that. But also even if the valve inside here moves, the orifice that's part of, that's from your EGR valve, it's, that's on the intake side usually, uh, sometimes they all have heavy carbon buildup, so you would need to clean that 
one thoroughly with some uh, throttle body cleaner and make sure it's free of any buildup and that uh, your air can pass through freely from the from this side of the EGR valve into the intake side when you apply vacuum and the valve moves up, okay? And again, if the valve moves and the passageway inside the EGR valve are clear, then again, it could be the passages through your throttle body or your intake, which you'll need to inspect and clean with some throttle body cleaner, or this tube could be blocked again, and you need to replace the, or clean that. Okay, now let's say you've either inspected and verified the valve is good or you replaced it, you've cleaned uh, all the passageways inside the intake and the tube, you've made sure the tube is clear, but you're still getting the insufficient flow check engine light. Well next you would need to start looking at your, uh, your EGR solenoid, which is this guy here again. Okay, now actually before we test the solenoid itself, first we're gonna make sure that the vacuum that's the vacuum line that's coming from your throttle body to the solenoid is intact and in fact is not broken somewhere. So what we're going to do is actually remove it from the solenoid like this. Next, we're going to turn on the car and at idle, this red one or whichever one that's coming from your intake or your throttle body needs to have uh, engine vacuum present here. And then you can check that by just putting your finger on it. And if you feel the vacuum, then you know that this, uh, this hose is not broken somewhere and in fact, it's, in fa it's intact. Okay, here we go. Here's the red one. Oh yeah. Yep, there's plenty of vacuum here. Now I know this is a good EGR system, but anyway. There we go. Okay, so next it's time for some back probing in this solenoid. Uh, as you can see, I got my paper clip here already. Uh, what we're going to do first is to check for uh, voltage present at the solenoid. Now it's going to be different on different makes and models, but on this one, it's going to be this wire, which is a yellow and a red one on the right. And there again is a part of a paper clip I was able to jam in there. So what we're going to do next is to we're going to set our multimeter to volts, and then we're going to ground our black lead, and then attach our red lead to this uh, piece that we got inside the this connector for the solenoid. And next, we're going to go and uh, go ahead and either turn on the car or just turn the key to the accessory position. And then we should be getting 12 volts here at, at that wire, okay? Okay, now we got roughly about 12 points here, which is fine. If you don't get 12 volts here, you need to go ahead and check up on the wiring that goes from here down around into your wiring harness. It might be other, uh, it might be rubbing off somewhere, it might have become uh, damaged and you need to go ahead and replace or fix that. So what you'll need to do next is to, in order to verify the solenoid is working properly, is a little bit more involved. In fact, I'm not going to show you, but I'll tell you what you'll need to do. Basically, you'll need to disconnect the vacuum line that goes from the solenoid to the EGR, but leave the one that goes from your uh, throttle body to the solenoid intact, in our case. We're going to be disconnecting the green one and then leaving the red one intact down here. Then you'll need to get a long piece of vacuum hose and then attach it to your uh, to this port that was that's for your EGR valve. And then get the other part of this vacuum hose and attach it to a vacuum gauge and then run this uh, through your hood and then secure it to your windshield. Okay, and after you secure the vacuum line and the gauge that's attached to it to the windshield, uh, you want to get inside your car, turn on the engine, and warm up the engine to operating temperature. You want to make sure it's, uh, it reaches operating temperature because before that your computer is not going to activate the solenoid anyway. And then from a stop, you want to accelerate and put the engine under load, and what you're looking for is for vacuum, your vacuum gauge needle, for it to move and show that there is in fact vacuum in the system. If you, you see that you have vacuum, then that verifies that the solenoid is supplying vacuum from the port that's going to your EGR valve, and indeed it's working correctly. And if it doesn't supply vacuum or it's very little movement in the needle, then you'll know that the solenoid is bad and you need to replace the solenoid. Okay, next it's time to test the EGR pressure sensor or, or the DPFE. Uh, but before we actually test the sensor itself, again, try your best to 
take a good uh, look at all the, the hoses that go from the, the sensor down to the, to the exhaust tube and make sure those are not damaged or cracked and are not leaking. Also another way you can tell whether this, this pipe that comes from your uh, exhaust pipe to the CGL valve, whether it's uh, blocked, it's all, uh, it has carbon buildup inside and it's blocked or not is that after you remove this, if you have access to compressed air, just go ahead and blow some uh, compressed air in there and then check for back pressure. See if the air comes back out shooting at you. If it does, then you're, uh, you know, there's some blocking issues on this and you need to either replace it or clean it thoroughly. Just don't set your uh, compressed air, if you have a regular air compressor, don't set it to max. Just reduce it to, I don't know, 30 psi or so, and then blow it in there. Here's a look at the back of the connector, and as you can see, you got three wires. One of these wires is going to be for your reference ground, the other one is your reference voltage, and the third one is your uh, signal voltage. What you want to do is first start with your reference ground and your reference voltage. You want to turn the key to the on position and not start the car, which is key on, engine off, and you want to back probe those two wires and with your multimeter and see what kind of voltage you get. If you and you need to get five volts or you know within let's say five percent of all five volts is, is fine as well. If you don't get that amount of voltage, uh, then there is a problem with the wiring that comes from your ECU or to this connector. It could be you know, a damaged wire, bad connection somewhere, so you need to get out your, uh, your wiring diagrams and check up on that. But if you do get five volts, then you go up, then next you go to, the, to your signal wire, wire and check for voltage at that wire. And it's gonna vary based on your make and model, but on this car, I think it's uh, one volt or one volt. And if you don't get one volt, then you have verified that the sensor itself uh, is not good and uh, you need to replace the sensor. You do this obviously again with this connector still attached to the sensor, okay? All right now, that should do it. So hopefully when I edit this video down, it doesn't turn out to be 20 minutes longer, you know, or something like that and uh, dissuade people from uh, tackling their EGR issues themselves. But uh, if you want to do it yourself, you know, this is the, the diagnostics procedure unless you want to start throwing parts at your car, which is never a good idea. But anyway, hope this video helps people out there. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.